like I said, you guys, I'm adopted. I grew up in a white family in the Midwest, so I have no beauty standards from South Korea. I'm a thick woman. I weigh about 165 pounds. I'm 5'5", five five, so honestly, the brothers like to holler, and they still do, regardless of what some men in the comments are trying to say that black men aren't checking for Asian women. Yeah, right. Check my DMs. Pretty much every time I met a black man, he thought it would be a flex to say something like, yeah, I like my women foreign. I like my women exotic. And I don't know why they decided to say that to me, if they thought it would make me feel good or something, but for me, it's always a red flag. And so I would dig in a little bit further and say, well, what do you mean by that? So anyway, whenever these guys would say this, I'd be like, well, you're about to be in for a big disappointment if you're expecting a submissive, docile Asian to take care of you. But it really bothered me when these guys would say, yeah, I don't like black women, because that's what it always came down to, that they didn't date black women, regardless if they were black or not. And their moms are black, their sisters are black, their cousins are black. I'm like, would you say this to their face? That's weird. I know you see the opening clip or video that I posted. Uh, this um, Asian American woman is on line um, and she's made her way around the net because people have been uh, responding to her comments regarding passport bros and the things like that. Now, when I first saw a clip of her, I saw a clip of her in the context of um, a couple uh, young black men or, or um, mature, uh, more what we've seen as mature black men making comments about uh, her and her statements about like why she summarized her statement in the fact that she's standing up for women and that uh, she made some other statements about how she feels or what she, the feedback she gets when she gets approached by black men and no other race of men approaches her like that. And she gets comments about um, how they like exotic women. And a lot of comments she gets are black men that are, uh, that are expressing their displeasure for black women. Okay, now let me just tell you this. My biggest word of advice for you, if you're a black man, if you're a black American man and you uh, meet somebody of another race and you want to be, you want to start dating them, blase, blase. The biggest piece of advice I have for you is to keep your damn mouth shut. Keep your mouth shut. You're given one mouth and two ears. Okay, listen and then speak. And the reason why is because imagine this, imagine I go into a job interview, right? And I want to get a job because basically when you go to a woman, you're selling yourself. It's like you're, it's like you're applying for a job, right? Imagine I go into a job interview and I start bad mouthing the company that I was at before. What do you think the hiring manager at the new company would say? The hiring manager, at the new company would think, Oh, I know that if this person leaves, if I give a person a job and then he leaves this job, he's going to go mouthing off about me to somebody else. So the first thing is, as men, regardless of what people say about uh, what theories are being proposed about how men and women are the same and blah, blah, blah. We must remember as men, there's a certain way that we need to carry ourselves in order to get things done. N another thing is when you talk bad about your own race to other people of a different race and that, and those people of a different race are people that ha don't have a, an interest in, uh, in, in, in particularly changing the behaviors or having a political discussion, then what you're doing is you are actually weakening your position because when you go to a, uh, like that woman, that woman that was on TikTok, the Asian woman, uh, well, she's adopted. So she's biologically Asian, but she's not culturally Asian that she mentions. She's culturally, like she says, white bread. I just said, she's culturally a uh, mainstream American. But when you go to her and she's not familiar with, um, black American culture and you down black women and she's made the comments your sisters your mothers your cousins da, 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 or women I get I get that I know 
what people are going through. I know the ups and downs in the black American culture, but that's not something that's not something to be used as a talking point in trying to raise your value in front of a woman, a woman. Women stick together. Like she said, regardless of race, women stick together. And unfortunately, men, we don't stick together like women stick together. Okay. But going to a woman and and making bad comments about a feature or an attribute that could potentially be yours is like degrading your own value. Yes, in the sense, I know that people say, well, you know, when you talk to a black woman about something that you don't like she's doing and then she says, well, your mama's black, right? In that particular circumstance, that that that's a cop out. But when you go and you lead with, when you go to someone of another race and you lead with negative aspects or negative things that you perceive about black women, you are de- devaluing yourself because the person from another culture doesn't see people in their own culture doing that. It's something that they see as unique to black Americans. Um, you know, the the uh, black man versus black woman back and forth. As men, we're not supposed to engage in the back and forth um, because it doesn't help us go anywhere. What you what, what helps you is what you do, not what you say. So when you go to them and you're like, yeah, I don't like, uh, I like my women foreign, I like my women exotic and blah, blah, blah. What that makes them think is, okay, so you're basically going to them to run away from somewhere else. You're unable to control the situation where you are, theoretically. And so you're escaping, you're trying to use them as an escape route. That devalues you and that makes them feel devalued. Feel whatever you want to feel have whatever opinions you want to have but if you want to get something there's an old saying an old southern saying goes you can get more flies with honey than you can with vinegar when you want to get something and you want to get your way you say what you need to say to get where you need to go and maintain that political discussions discussions about behavioral issues are best done with other people on your in your social uh, economic circles or levels people who are impartial to uh, seeing you as a as a unique selling proposition but when you approach a woman you don't approach her with negativity your your job is to pretty much approach her with your best foot forward and then afterwards your 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 job is to manage expectations to uh to overcome objections to manage expectations things like that like you're selling something like you like and now once you sold it now you have to continue to keep in touch with your customers it's a job dude it's a job even if you you guys seem like you're like equally yoked and you guys have a lot of different things in common you still as a man you still have to maintain your frame and manage expectations the biggest advice i have for black men when you're going out there and you're doing your thing keep your mouth shut and get what you got to get blow out